All right, it's finally time. Hades. Because first it had to hit 1.0 finally. Ah, hello. First I had to hit 1.0 finally, and then I needed to have like a clear moment in the schedule to get around to it. And it's finally time. I'm a little, little distressed by how long it might be, but we'll see. Uh, there's never going to be a right time to play a really long game if I fixate too much on that. Uh, we need your permission, okay. Do I have much options to set up this time around? I'm not, ne not necessarily... God mode, jeez. Yeah, I just want to know that subtitles are on. Uh, okay, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> I wasn't ready for a weird interruption. We're good, everything's good. Everything's normal, we're fine, yep. All right, so I... When I played Bastion about a decade ago at this point now, right? Like, that's 2011. I guess that was the year I started Let's Playing too, but that was slightly before that. Uh, instant, lifelong fan of the company. Boom. <laughs> that one game was enough. Like, immediately I'm like, okay, Supergiant, I am going to be a big fan and play everything that you play, that you make, until you, unless you, like, completely betray my trust in, like, a Mass Effect Andromeda sort of way. Like, and that has definitely not happened. Uh, the next game was my least favorite, admittedly, but then, but then the next game was my most favorite. Like, Bastion set the stage, but, uh, Pyre was incredible. And I, I just like seeing what they'll do. Like, they, they, they hop into particular genres and kind of make them their own and do something interesting each time. Like, Bastion at first glance feels like, oh, it's like a Diablo style game, right? But like Diablo games are about kind of like, I don't know, like semi-consciously grinding. Like you're just like, uh, like you're practically drooling because of how little engagement you're getting really. And you're probably listening to a podcast or YouTube videos because you're just, you're just clicking and the numbers keep getting bigger and then you go forward and you click and the numbers get bigger and you keep playing more levels forever. And it's like, and Bastion's like, no. What if we use that perspective and that combat style, but it was all about more the Dark Souls direction, where it's like, this is going to be challenging specifically because you have to play com pay complete attention to every moment of the game, be really aware and reactive, and, and like everything's really dynamic and interesting, and it's like, yes, this is what I want. Um, Transistor was weird. It was like a particular style of turn-based combat, but like... A few things didn't work for me, in part, like, that's, like, punishment system, because I'd make these big, complicated builds, but then I'd take, like, some damage, and it would delete one of my abilities, and then my whole build would fall apart, and... I don't know. I didn't love that game, but it was really cool, and the, the setting and the music were great. Uh, it's just the actual act of playing it didn't really work on me that time. Next time around Pyre, like, I completely tried to not pay any attention to it at all. I saw that it was a top-down game. I honestly thought it was going to be a turn-based strategy game based on screenshots alone. Then I started playing it. And I'm like, this is this is like NBA Jam or like rugby or something. This is a sports game. And then you see how long the story segments are. You're like, this is a visual novel sports game. I didn't. Okay, Super Giant, let's do this. And then I it turned out to be like one of my favorite executions of anything in a long time and a serious game of the year ca uh, candidate that year and so on. I love how it implements consequence and choice into the story and how you you winning or losing just rolls into the story and like you have all these developed characters you care about which gives you these interesting dynamic choices of like do i want i want to help them because like them ascending is like their goal and i want them to be happy but also i lose them if i do that and like what a fucking dilemma to think about like what a cool game and so so i go into this and i got i've got misgivings because i'm like ah oh, it's a roguelite this is like the genre that I'm like, they're kind of, they're cool. I don't like want to diss roguelites aggressively or anything, but like for me, the dying and starting over is a big ask in many cases. I've played a few of them like Rogue Legacy and I think this game is a little closer to Rogue Legacy and so on. Uh, but the constant like starting over and losing earlier progress is a little rough for me. I've never quite gotten the appeal of that the way that other people's have people have, but there's plenty of people that sit here and play a a uh, roguelike for hundreds of hours, like the Northern Lions and stuff out there. And then as a content creator, there's also the part of me that like I want a clearly defined series. Like it starts here, it ends there. That's when the finale is, and that's when I can be like, okay, let's move on, or the check if there's DLC to play afterwards, or expansions or something. And if I really, really love the game, maybe I'll be like, ah, let's do a new game plus with a different character build or something. But that's that's about it, and that's really rare. So 
when a game like Dicey Dungeons comes around or something like this, I'm a little nervous because it's like, I do I disappoint the audience by not doing everything they want me to do or have, or experience every single element of the game or sticking around for like the hundreds of hours to properly experience this genre? Or uh, do I like go on for too long when I'm sort of getting tired of it? And so it's like, I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm dipping my toes into here and I'm kind of trusting Supergiant on the fact that just like they've just knocked it out of the park so much and they got me to play a visual novel sports game last time so I, I'm hoping that I love it. <laughs> I did a let's try of this game so I know that it's fun uh, like a year ago maybe or something but I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen because I don't really remember what happened in that anyway so this is gonna be the functional part one anyway but uh yeah don't know what the scope of the series is gonna be I'm sure I'll like I'll beat it at least once or something, but I I won't be really clear on when to end it necessarily, and maybe audience feedback will give me some information about the scale the scope of this and what to expect because I'm going in blind as I usually am. But careful with spoilers. Don't like actively spoil everything, but like some kind of vague structural hints about like what a finale could be for the series could be helpful because it's confusing. All right, so there's my old save. Can I just delete it? Can I just click on... Yeah, there you go. Get out of here. All right. I'm excited. Few tales are told of Hades, whose very name inspires fear and penitence, reminding us of the inevitable fate which we all share. I, however, mean to tell you such a tale. Listen carefully. Goodbye, father. And off we go. I'm playing with the controller because this perspective... It works better for me uh, as a dual stick game than it does as a game where you WASD around with one hand and then mouse click with the right hand. Like, I've never really gotten that in this kind of game. Like, I definitely played Diablo 2 that way, but like I said before, it's like a... It's kind of mindless most of the time. It's more about like planning and builds, if anything, if you can even give it that much credit sometimes. But like, uh, this is how I play Bastion. Left click move, left stick move, right stick aim, press buttons to fire and so on. And yes, I don't have a playthrough of Bastion on this channel. I do have a playthrough of Transistor and Pyre, but not Bastion because it predates me doing Let's Plays. I'll get around to it one day, I swear. I'm leaving. Hi there. Stop me. Whoop. Oop, there we go. Ow. Sorry, checking my buttons here. So B throws our thing. Yeah, and this it's a resource we lose and it comes back if we go gather it again. So X is my melee attack, A is dodge. We have to be very careful because every hit sticks around. In their other games, there's usually some kind of healing or like the between combats checkpoints or so on. But because it's a roguelike, every single hit continues to build up. And so it's all about avoiding as many hits as I can for as long as possible. Every single ta damage I take is, is, is it has consequences for the rest of the run. It's definitely part of the appeal, right, of this kind of genre. Is just like the stakes there, the constant pressure to do things perfectly, while also not necessarily because of the randomization, having the ability to completely plan and react to like memorizing the same run every over and over again, the way you would like if you were like speed running something or just I don't know playing a game like Dark Souls, for example, several times over. It's got to be her. Then here goes nothing. <clears throat> In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. Hail, noble cousin. Now, let's get you from that miserable place. I'll see that all of us upon Olympus do our part, beginning here with me. Hello. The standard boon system. Really consistent in these games. The you pick one of three things sort of intermittent upgrades. So Divine Strike, your attack is stronger and you can deflect. Oh, and can deflect. So the attack itself deflects projectiles, I assume. 
Phalanx shot. B casts a powerful ranged attack. Retrieve it to the token to use it again. And it also has deflect, so this is a, a projectile that, that deflects. Your dash deals damage and can deflect. Okay. So do I want my really basic attack to just be 40% stronger? Do I want my B attack to be very strong, but it still is the thing that I have to pick up again? Or do I want a dash that does a little damage? The attack seems pretty straightforward. I know you can't hear me all the way where you are, goddess, but thank you. Seems like an easiest option for my first run. Because you just this is a very big attack swing, and I'm usually just att attacking a lot of the time anyway. You is that you like attack support beams and then like stuff from the sky falls down? Can, can that hurt me? It's a fun detail. I absolutely oop, what's going on? I love how Supergiant just uh, refuses to stagnate. <laughs> like they're always trying something new with each game. Like this is cl this is technically one of the safer choices they've made so far in that it's kind of a return to what Bastion was. But it's their first roguelike and it's their first early access game. Simple. Which some might say those two were hand in hand. Some darkness. It always makes me curious about what they're gonna do next. But they don't just make simple, straightforward upgrades, to, uh, sequels to everything. Oh, that was a door choice, not a item pickup. Was that? That's a bomb. Oh shit! I looked away. <laughs> I was looking at the. I was looking at the exploding thing. Oh, I'm a wreck. So like a, oh, it's like a dodge attack. Wait, why is that happening? Wait, something. What's up? Thanks for the heal. Ooh, maximum health, not a heal, but it also healed. It gave me what it gave as maximum health. These guys explode. What was going on? To figure out what's going on. Sometimes when I after I dodge, he attacks. And is it, be, is it because I've already pressed? Is, was I mashing X so hard that it like queued up the attack and then did it after the dodge? Maybe. I'm like, is my controller broken? Am I in trouble here? <laughs> what's that? Wait, is there a skull by his head? I think they had skull. <laughs> skull by. There's a skull in his head technically. Uh, they have like skull health bars. Is that just the- are they tougher? They seem to have two health bars. Ow. Big stab. Dash stab. Ow. Gotta be careful. <laughs> A lot of enemies try and attack me at the same time. I like the dash stab. is always so good. Oh. Oop, that's are spikes. Oh. I'm a disaster. Mixing up my buttons a tad. Oop. Maybe I should remap if I can. I'm so used to, uh, I'm used to B, uh, B being a dodge. A as a dodge just feels slightly weird. Blame Dark Souls.
I wonder if right bumper's already assigned to something, or if I can just make that my normal attack. That'd be a weird move set for people's standards. But muscle memory is there. Your special is stronger and can deflect. Ooh, so why is my special? Have I not been using that? When you deflect attacks, it deals more damage. Deflect damage plus 80%. Uh, resist damage from foes attacks. Reduce damage from foes 5%. I'll make my special stronger. That seems straightforward. Uh, I hurt. Can't heal myself, but I can fight. I'm looking everywhere on the screen for like a meter or like a cost. I don't think it has a cost. I think it's just risky to use. There's a, it's a bit of a flourish. So if you use it at the wrong moment, you might get in trouble. Okay, so yeah, we, now we've clarified these are doors. I think those are also the branching paths through the environment, so you pick a particular reward, but it also affects which path you're taking. In fact, I think you potentially don't get the reward until... I think this is telling me what reward is inside that room, right? Like, I don't get the key now, but there will be a key in here? Is that the idea? Numbskulls. These are the branching paths you usually have, and like an FTL or a Slay the Spire. Numb skulls. Seems a little rude. <laughs> oh, press the wrong button again. My wires are getting crossed. I might might need to, after this episode, try a new control scheme. But then I'll be completing that episode that my wires are crossed because I've been playing the other control scheme. Controls are weird. You just, you pick one, you struggle for a while, and then eventually you're like, ah, I don't think about them anymore. Okay, I'm looking at my interface, which is risky during combat, but I don't see a key anywhere, so I don't think I have a key yet. Oh, where is it? Shit. Oh, it's over here. I tried to... I tried to... Oh, I'm about to die. I tried to pick it up based on memory, basically, as opposed to actually physically finding it on the screen. There's the key. Alright, so we verified. Door shows what reward is in that room, but you have to finish the room to get the reward. The first glance is just like, it's just a ball with an item in it. I must get that ball. I must be picking up an item, right? No. <laughs> so that gives me uh, an Osiris looking token, or. Not Osiris. The Jackal. Am I forgetting the Jackal's name? Anubis. Got Anubis ears. And then there's this just a bag of gold. Just a bag of money right there. Uh, let's pause the game. Uh, can I like bring my mouse over here and highlight these? Nope. Nope. We won't have a bet. We won't have a great understanding of what these things are until uh, later in the game. Probably between runs when I have a chance to potentially spend them. Well, I already have. Let's see, do I? Is there a resource show up here? So I have a key, I have 20 purples, and I have 71, uh, look, I'll just call them Anubis tokens, I guess. That's all I know what they're called. I don't have any money, I don't think. I don't see a money on the screen. It went that bottom right with all the currencies. One hit will kill me. Oh, it's a store. You spend those tokens. Is that a healing item? I think that's a heal, yeah. Hmm. Hey Sharon, how you doing? Why well, good to see you, Charon mate. Just minding my own business, taking in the sights, and hey, what's that you got? Some sort of wares for sale? And I'll just have a look around. Sure your name's not Sharon? The infernal wares of the Stygian boatman Charon lie sprawled about. Available for sale, Doom ever would be willing to quench the boatman's great thirst for riches. That would right. be me. So I guess I'll call them Karen coins for now, but I think there's a, there's a name for it, I think. Because, yeah, they're talking of, I think they're referring to, like, the idea of, like, when you... You put the coins on the eyes of the dead when they're buried, and those are, like, to pay their passage 
across the boat. Like the app. Uh, there it is. There's the boat. That's the boat of the dead and all that. That this is the the river of lost souls or you know the, uh, names 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 names. I'm getting them all wrong, but yeah. I think the the coins we have are the ones you put on people's head on people's eyes when they're dead to pay their their due. I can only afford this one, and I'm about to die, so I probably should. There we go. 50 coins for 30 health. That is not the best exchange rate. Now watch me lose it immediately. Uh, I don't see other paths. So this gives me... It looks like an apple in a wine glass. <laughs> or maybe it's just wine. Uh, and there's like an increased difficulty icon. It's a little skull with an up arrow with this red... The skulls must be like harder versions of the enemies. I noticed that when the skull enemies had skulls, they had a second health bar. Wait, is this Doom music? <laughs> oh god! die when you touch it. I thought the bombs exploded on timers. So I accidentally walked into one and took a ton of damage. Damn it. Not our best start. That was a... Home. I bought health only to die in that room anyway. Yes, carry on everyone, don't mind me. How grumpy that ghost is. What? Oh. You're right. Welcome to the House of Hades, where... Wait, I know you. Guess that means you died out there, huh? Well, don't be sad, though. Pretty much everybody dies sometime. Some of us more than others. Oh, that's all they have to say. Back already. Cerberus! Pat, there's a good boy. And they've all got different personalities. <laughs> One of them's just resting. How you doing, buddy? You're more important than dad. Infernal watchdog Cerberus regards the underworld prince with mixed emotions. From purest joy to deepest melancholy. You watch over things for me, won't you, boy? You know I'd take you if I could. Here, yeah, boy. Just as long as one of your three heads enjoys these pets. <laughs> the other one wants the attention too. One of them's just so sad. Why you gotta hit me with the sad dog? Alright. Stupid boy. I told you nobody gets out of here, whether alive or dead. Well, how was your wanton ransacking of my domain? Greetings, father. My ransacking was a delight, thank you for asking. So I'll just be on my way again. Be on your way indeed. What do I care? You shall never reach the surface. Go, see for yourself. Ah, why does your shoulder pad that is skull have eye on it? Everything's rotted away, but the eye is still there. You are irritating me, boy. It's fine, I don't really care. A vast and intricately crafted mosaic depicts the underworld king presiding over the enormity of his domain, whilst its chthonic residents look on in awe of him. He's not really that great. Keep it down. Chthonic. It's a pretty ballsy move having a mural of yourself behind your desk. Being surrounded by a ring of skulls and all that. I guess he is Hades. And he's back to sleep. You've returned. So this'll be a mechanic at some point. This door is just waiting to open up at a later date. 
Very good to see you, lad. Despite the circumstances, remember your training out there. The pain of death is but another obstacle. And fear is for the weak. Take care, Achilles. Hmm. It would be pretty funny. It would, it would be pretty funny to have a dog named Achilles. Yep. <laughs> Keep that in the back of my mind for later. <laughs> it's like, what if you named your dog Achilles? And you're going out on a walk and be like, hey, Achilles, heal. <laughs> I love it. The house of Hades. That dark and lavishly appointed lair of the underworld's king is home not just to him, but to his willful progeny. You know I can hear you, old man. Oh. You can hear the narrator? Also, are you and the narrator and Hades all the same voice actor from the one that played the old man in, in Bastion and is in every game that they make? I think they're all the same. I think they're all him. I don't know, I'm, his, his name doesn't come straight to mind, which is a problem. But yeah, he's like their go-to voice actor in that he was their only voice actor for the first two games. You have come home. Do not despair, child. Such setbacks are inevitable and may be overcome with effort and with time. You made contact with the goddess Athena. She shall be true to her word. I believe it, Nyx. I'm grateful that you put us into contact. I know you took a considerable risk in reaching out. The risk is not to me. I expected the Olympians would involve themselves in this eventually. Reveal to them no more than they already know. Are we understood? Yes, we are. Then go. She just told me to gather up all of my negative emotions, my despair, my helplessness, and nix them. Hey, room. <laughs> I'm back. Use the mirror to grow stronger. That's, um... Alright. Are you sure I'm not a narcissist? Can't right. sleep. Well. The bedchambers of Prince Zagreus lie in a perpetual state of utter disarray, despite his lord and master of the house repeatedly insisting that he pick everything up. Oh, come on. It's not that bad, is it? Night and darkness guide me. Let's go flex in the mirror. Shadow Presence deals bonus attack and special damage when striking foes from behind. Plus 10 per rank. Backstab attack. Chthonic Vitality. Restore a small amount of your heart when you exit a chamber. Plus 1 per rank. Ooh. That's interesting. So right now, it'll do trash nothing. But eventually it'll do a lot. Like five ranks, you're getting five health per room. Like that's definitely not nothing, especially with a when like every little chip of damage you take is inching you towards failing your run. Building up that chthonic vitality is very useful in the long term. I have very little purple, and now I know now I, now I know purple is. I kind of figured because purple's often experienced, but yeah, it's it's directly like that, and we want as much as we, of it as we can. Death defiance restore fifty percent uh, heart instead of dying when you're. Life total is depleted. One time per rank. Wait, so you just get like a whole... You can just start having like more and more lives? That seems incredibly powerful. Greater reflex. Perform plus one additional dash in quick succession. Huh. This one just straight up has a little diamond, so I'm assuming that you buy it and then it just goes away. But maybe... It doesn't even mention having more ranks, so maybe you just get an extra dash. Maybe more things will- yeah, unlock talents. So getting keys unlocks the next part of this talent tree. So I'll have more things to spend purple on, but for now it's just these things. I figure some of these things just go away forever, and something like Death Defiance might have a cap on how many you can buy. They might all have caps eventually, but I imagine these plus one and whatnots are much more expensive. Let's go ahead and grab the plus one health per room. It's kind of a weak start, but why not? And then 10% attack from behind. Why not? Would have preferred to have more health. But it's going to get more expensive every single time. 
So we're just gonna have to actually get more purple. Okay. Oh, the keys are also used to unlock new weapons. Well, isn't that interesting? I need to track down more Chthonic keys. No, I just want to know what it is. Uh huh. Ooh. Wait. I can escape through that pink window there. Yeah, that's that's just the sword I'm holding right now. Uh, didn't quite recognize it without the color at first. So I have that sword. There is a bident and a shield or something. And this is a bow, and these two are just empty completely, so we don't even get to know... We don't even get the hint of what they are. I must get them as a reward at some point. What's, what's this? I'll have to come back later. Keepsakes. Ah. And a secret stash. Oh, there's stuff in these boxes I can unlock with special keys, apparently. Okay. That might be where two of these weapons are. I can do this. First get past the wretched shades of Tartarus. Easier said than done. And doubtless I'll be running into Meg. The river of flame ought to be just beyond. Find a way up to Elysium from there, and after that... Alright, let's give it another shot. He's planning. But you know what they say about the best laid plans. Alright, let's check controls and see if I can remap them. I assume I can. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I've remapped my controls. Right bumper is attack. Right trigger is my special because it's kind of like your heavy attack. At least it is with this first weapon. Like this is my, this is RB and this is our tri right trigger. Like that's pretty intuitive for light and heavy. Then um... I've got X for reload, because that's the usual reload button in shooters and whatnot. A is interact, that's pretty straightforward, a ton of games A is interact. Right bumper was a slightly weird way that this game mapped it, but that's because the, in this game they mapped, they used up all the face buttons, and they're like, it's eh, some peripheral thing, it's fine, because it, it, for them it's like, it could be any button, because there's going to be a prompt when you interact anyway. Casting is Y, dashing is B, so Dark Souls logic a little bit. B is my dash around, Y is my ranged attack, because, you know, Y is your forward pointing up button on the controller, so that, that kind of like intuitively is often used for that kind of case. Interestingly, this frees me up so that dashing and attacking are different fingers, so I don't have to pick up my finger off of dash in order to hit attack, which is kind of handy. I don't really know what some of these other buttons do necessarily, like call and and uh, summon. Well, summons conceptually straightforward. I just don't know what it mean, what it'll do in this game specifically. But call and summon, which technically are synonyms, <laughs> uh, are LB and LT until I have a any reason not to have them be that. And uh, yeah, originally reload was clicking right stick, but now it's uh, X, which is pretty normal for me, but that might not be the best thing because maybe it was right clicking right stick because you're running around with like a bow and like you're moving with left stick and aiming with right stick, so maybe clicking makes sense more so than pressing X at that point. So I, I might remap that, we'll see. For now, I'm gonna still use a sword, so I don't have to worry about that yet. Let's see how quickly I can get used to the new controls or if it messes with me. Ah! The top of Hades' head has the same icon as those icon as those coins. Is this really him? Okay. In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. Greetings there, young man. Look, your father's always been rather difficult, and he's not so much as called in quite some time. You'll have a better home where you belong, here on Olympus. And to help you on your journey, have my blessing. He's not so much as called in a long time. Yeah, your attack emits chain lightning when you damage a foe. <sighs> I do love chain lightning. Uh, your your cast is a burst of chain lightning that bounces between foes, and your dash causes lightning bolts to strike near foes. So they're, they're all lightning. 
I do really like Chain Lightning, so me and me and Zeus are probably gonna get along. Even though he's like, he's Zeus, which is his own other bag of worms. Lord Uncle Zeus lending his support. Never thought I'd see the day or night, whenever. I'm also not super used to uh, this whole system of firing a projectile then having to like go get it. So let's not overly upgrade that yet until I get better at actually retrieving it and keep track of where I, I sent it and so on. Composed of such innumerable, ever-shifting, interlocking chambers, the underworld of Lord Hades all but guarantees the dead shall there remain until the end of time. Good thing I'm not dead. Until the end of time. <laughs> Wretches. Nope. At least I got some health. Immediately I'm pressing the wrong button because played this game for a whole 20 minutes and I've already internalized different controls. Danger. I can just really, like, just layer that into my normal combos really, really casually. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Those are definitely good finds whenever they pop up. Hmm. So this gives me more coins for this run. Oh yeah, I have 10 now, which I think is even less than I had after I spent some. So I think you lose all your coins every run. So those are just... Yeah, that makes sense. Because a go-to for these kinds of roguelites where you can upgrade over time, like... Rogue Legacy and whatnot. I don't remember if that game specifically had it or what, or what, but oftentimes there's a run currency and a metagame currency. And so one of them is a currency you spend for risk reward choices during the run, but then you lose it when you die. Then the other currency is the one you spend between the runs to keep upgrading yourself so that you can then be better next run. I'm curious about this one. Let's learn what this means. It might be a goddess specifically or a health upgrade. I figure like some of these icons right might represent characters I'll encounter. Out. Oh, that deleted him. Oh, uh, no, I have it. I just mixed up my buttons. <laughs> it's cool. I'll just stick with these buttons until I get used to them. Now that I've customized them, even if that's going to be an awkward moment of me still using the, the old controls from the, the beginning of this episode. Yeah, I definitely do a little dash where I attack afterwards sometimes, and I'm not totally sure why. It's hard to say if something's going wrong, or if that's an intended, like, you dodged at the right time, here's an attack. Oh, that was interesting. I That time I dodged and did... Oop. It is a it is a boon of a specific character. That's what I figured. It must be a mess. Let's see here. Hi there. In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. Why, hello, hello there, little god thing. I have to say, you're quite the specimen, and so I've decided I shall aid you for the moment. You interested? Yep, it's literally Aphrodite. So I was on. I was right to suspect that the very specifically designed pink heart with other elements going on and whatnot means a bit more than just a health upgrade or something. So I need to memorize some of these icons because they're the boons of specific characters. Like the lightning bolt is Zeus, and that's the reward of the room. Heartbreak flourish. Your special deals more damage and inflicts weak. Four seconds. The victim deals thirty percent less. Damn, at least that would do 30% less damage. It gets stronger than that, potentially? Huh. And my special gets way stronger, which... Now that I'm actually using my special, I know that you can just kind of, like, pepper that in, at least for this weapon. And it's a big AoE. It's like, I could practically spam it, as long as I don't get caught. Your cast is a, is a wide but short-range blast that inflicts weak, so it's like a shotgun now? Does it being a short-range blast mean it's easier to get it back each time and, you, and reuse it, I wonder? 
Passion Dash. Your dash deals damage when uh, where you end up, inflicting weak. Hmm. I don't know, I'm getting used to using my special. Interested in the power to break hearts? Sure, I don't see why not. That's, oh yeah, it's even become pink. So I guess each individual attack will take, like, they start off as red when they represent me. But as I upgrade them, they'll take on the color of different, yep. Yep, my red bumper does a lightning attack, because it's the Zeus attack. That's that's interesting, they actually incorporate each upgrade into the visuals, and not just as, on, on the crowded icon spam that usually happens in these games. <clears throat> So it looks like you have a you have a fast attack upgrade, you have a special attack upgrade, you have a casting upgrade. Come back. Uh oh. What have I done? And you have a dash upgrade. And so that's what those four icons mean. You can specifically tell like that uh that third one represents the casting icon and the last one is the uh the dashing icon. So that all makes sense. But I assume that means that if you upgrade say can I, does call mean I can bring you back? No? Help. Okay, there we go. Uh, hmm. I assume that if you get a second upgrade for the same slot, then you then have to pick. Like, you have to lose the previous one. Maybe you can hot swap between the two when you want to, or maybe just straight up lose the one you already have, and you have to choose to, that that's what you want to make happen. Then you have, like, the risk-reward. I sub You have, the you have like, the, the, uh, the trade-off of potentially, like, um, do I... Like this, I like this upgrade way more than the one I currently have, but it is already upgraded, so like, do I want this upgrade that I think is better for, for a thing that's already upgraded, or do I want this thing that goes into a slot I don't even have filled yet? Because that's just like a, a gap in my s s build, so you might have to make choices like that at some point. But my right, my right trigger seems very powerful. So making it more powerful just seems like an easy call. Does it just one-shot these people? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. My god, what have I done? Aphrodite. Chill. Oh my god, Aphrodite. Chill. This can unlock something back home. I see the irony, by the way, saying, oh my god, Aphrodite. Hmm. <laughs> Is that a persimmon, I think? That could represent a god. That definitely represents a god. A trident. It's the, that'll be a water god. I don't have the best memory for this stuff sometimes, so I have to keep Greek and Norse and uh, Roman straight at the same time, even though some of them are the same gods. And ba -da 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 -da. Is it called a persimmon? Is that what's called? Dude, this is so strong. Backstab. <laughs> yes. I dash behind them and do a backstab on top of everything else. A palm of power. That's a pomegranate. Not a persimmon. I had the right letter. Only two categories. Wait. The pomegranate of power. Oh, it upgrades the- these aren't new skills, it upgrades the existing skills. So you don't want the right trigger to be even stronger, or the chain lightning to be even stronger. Would you like your lightning damage to go from 10 to 14, or would you like the thing that already does a billion damage to do, like, a billion more damage? Disgusting. I'm gonna miss this upgrade when I die. <laughs> I'm dead. So, so your right trigger- right stick opens this up. I'm definitely gonna miss this upgrade when it's gone. Oh my god. It's so powerful. Uh, experience or key are both so tempting. Hmm. What do I do when I run out of... Hmm. Hmm. I do want keys. Do I already have two, though? Uh... I already have two keys, so I can already uh, unlock the next tier. So let's go for experience. So I can spend it on said tier. Witches. I think I want to play with this weapon for a while before I get around to buying a bow. Whoop. 
Uh, did my attacks deflect? Shit, I don't remember. No, they don't, but they do break them. There's that. <laughs> I'm a mess. What are other buttons? I've got my trash button. Thank you, auto aim. Backstab. What do we have here? Hmm. Flaming sword. What mean? Oh, it's these guys again. It's time for revenge. Where's my thingy thing? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Oh, I took damage. I finally took damage. You bastard. It's easy to keep track of your bombs when there's only one of you. No! Oh, he dropped when he died. It didn't hurt me though, so maybe it's just a death animation? Huh. But yeah, I, uh, I'm really bad at the cast mechanic in this game. I keep losing track of where my diamond went, and then I just... I glance around, and I'm like, I just don't see it. It's a... There's various, there's a, it's a screen full of a lot of details, and the, the uh, diamond does not hop straight out at me. This one was bound to show up, I guess. In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. You've got quite the fighting spirit in you there, I have to say. Most intriguing, and yet no surprise for someone born in hell itself. You come on out of there and tell me all about it. I'm a fellow student of death, you see. The flaming sword is Ares. I should have figured that, honestly. Epic and rare. So epic is rarer than rare, I assume. That's usually the language going on here. Your cast sends a blade rift hurtling ahead? What? Blade rift. Slashing metal vortex deal rapidly deals damage in an area. Damage per hit, 24. I mean, it sounds exciting. After you take damage, inflict doom on foes around you. After a brief moment, a victim takes a burst of damage. 120. So I do like- it's like an explosion of damage around me. Urge to kill. Your attack, special, and cast deal more damage. 16%. Just across the board? Okay, so not all upgrades seem to go on your existing things. This one looks like it goes on like- Is there like a miscellaneous bar that has like infinite slots? That's for upgrades that aren't specifically one of your four skills. Hmm. It's just a flat 16% upgrade to your character for all three of your attacks. It's very tempting, but also this sounds cool, and I kind of want to see it, so... Sometimes that's the logic. I think they might have made it a deliberate choice to pick these up. And that maybe you can just leave them without picking them up, if you want to do, like, no boon runs. Because everyone, like, everyone knows that people like to do runs. Oh, it's a lingering, slow-moving thing that does damage over time. Uh, that's some fucking zone control right there. That's important. Yeah, if I, uh... This opens up a, a bigger screen when I open it. The top of the screen's... Yeah, it looks... Like that top bar up there... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So that top bar is all of my purple experience point upgrades so far, and it numbers the ones I have, and that's that's my overall character. And then that this this like Disco Elysium diagonal grid next to my skills is all of my passive effects that don't affect my direct abilities that are, I've equipped right now. Okay. I'm getting it all down. I'm figuring it out. I took damage in that room though, and that disappoints me. The bombs are scary. These weak arms are heavy. <laughs> Ha! Enjoy that. No one got hit by it. <laughs> I'm very good at this game. <laughs> I 
being this effective is cathartic, but also not exactly skill building. <laughs> so I'm not necessarily becoming a better player this run. But I am making some progress, and that's fun. Oh! Did I just get hit by that? Or did I break it with my attack? <laughs> Dash explode. Mine now. I am very creative. Maximum health upgrade? I think they called it a bull's heart. <laughs> it actually doesn't do that much damage compared to what I can do otherwise, though. I'm playing like such a coward. Oh, I got hit! Oh, why did I get hit by that? I'm such a fool. Oh, crap. Oh my god. Wait, does your... Oh, your yellow bar has tons of health and your red does not. God, I'm happy I'm getting this, but jeez, my poor health. They got me. No way to patch up. Got to keep going. He even has dialogue tied to the ha having taken more damage. Those guys attack relatively quickly. I need to be careful. And not just leave myself open. Those are all spike pads, right? Yeah. So we went there last time, right? So the the bag is a store. And I have over 100 this time. Oh, a power up. Oh. Do I want a power up or a heal? That that's a rough one. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant to... <laughs> that is what happens when you take the interact button and remap as the attack button. I've now been playing with the new buttons for about as long as I played with the old buttons, but I'm already a mess. I'm breaking stuff in your room! Ah, oh, it's so tempting to want a persimmon just to make myself stronger, but like, a heal... Uh... Don't spend it all in one place, mate. We don't have- we don't really have healing mechanics right now, I don't think. Oh? Survive for 45 seconds, okay. Triple kill. Oh, I think I missed one of them. Sneaky. Yeah, the downside is that it's a pretty slow attack. It's kind of like a crowd control ability in that they have to avoid it, but I think they do actually, like, I think they are smart enough to avoid it. These enemies are a little messy to fight this way. That was easy. I took one fireball, I think. Uh, those enemies aren't super dangerous, because their projectiles move so slow that if, if I'm just moving enough, they'll never hit me. Uh, but they're kind of hard to hit sometimes when there's like a, like here, where there's like holes in the environment. Were those spike pits? Did the spike pits go away? Is that what happened? It, hmm. There's a door here, but there's a table in the way. It might just be there for modularity's sake, and that they could have a run they could have a door there in other randomizations. If there wasn't a table in the way, I would think that maybe that path would have opened up if I had like killed more enemies fast enough, but I'm thinking that maybe the table in the way indicates that uh it's just not in use this time. in rooms like that, 
Surviving is like easy enough at times because he's a lot of running away. So they might add a, an additional risk. Okay, this time the lions aren't spikes. Maybe they make it go back and forth as to whether they're spikes at the time. So that you uh, aren't always sure. Ow. Meaning you have to be more observant. A lot of projectile enemies, admittedly. Which can get me in trouble. My tra my tracking on like bullet hell modes can be a mess sometimes. <laughs> hey buddy, come here. Multi-kill. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. Did I just get attacked by the thing? Did, did I see that right? Did the did the Manticore statue shoot arrows? Ow. He has it. Oh, God. Oh, the lions are traps. Oh, it bounces. That's interesting. So these lion thing. Ah. Uh, I guess I should, now that I've seen the statues, I should clarify. I should correctly call these Manticore tiles. But the Manticore tiles trigger traps. But they're not active once the room's over, or do only some of them work? Now that once the room's over, they don't do anything. Okay, so the ones that don't, so the the other ones had holes in them because they were spike traps. These ones trigger the the nearby statues to attack you. So the ones in the previous room might have never been spike traps. They might have triggered those Manticore statues in that room to attack me, but I just avoided them out of habit because I thought they were spikes. <laughs> Another store so soon. Is, is it because there's a boss fight next? That's a skull with two up arrows and a star, and a new icon I've never seen before. So I think this might be the pre-boss fight last chance to buy things before you potentially have a run-ending room. Oops. Beyond the present chamber lies the outermost perimeter of Tartarus, promising terrifying dangers far beyond the Underworld Prince's reckoning. And I can reckon quite a bit. Mmm, I'm gonna waste five of this, I think. But I should do it. Good. Because chances are I won't survive the next room. Unfortunately. Is it? I guess it's a hand. Just chunks are broken off, but still floating. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's a die. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Hot Sagrius, not one step further. Come on, Meg. Haven't we had more than enough of each other by now? Besides, don't you have some place else to be? Your father sent me. All in all, I'd rather be on your bad side than his. Now you can turn back like a good little man, or I can send you home the painful way. What'll it be? I'll have to go with the painful way. Man after my own heart. A one-winged angel. Oh. What you up to? Okay, so when she goes up in the air, that's bad. <laughs> Go away. Oh! She has summons. Oh, I didn't dodge away fast enough. Nah, I'm a mess. Oop. Oh, what was that? Oh, God. Okay, no, 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 no. That, that, that keeps going. No. Jeez. Ah. Uh. 
kind of a mess right now. That's not where I went to go. Close. It's a chunky health bar. Ah, oh, cheers for that, Meg. Hmm. Lawless runs are going to be a struggle. All right. So concludes our intro. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we'll see how episode structures work. It might be one episode. One. It might be one. Each run is one episode or something. But I don't know how long they're going to end up getting eventually. Uh. I go for vaguely half an hour episodes, but sometimes it might be like, here's a 25 episode minute episode, here's a 45 minute episode, uh, or if a long or, or if run is just so long, I might eventually have to split it because, you know, we're just trying to figure out the time here. But yeah, let's so begins our Hades thing. Ah, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to succeed on my first my first run, not like a successful run. I, I just wanted to beat a boss, but we did not. I'll see you tomorrow.